To learn more about earning college credits with Study Hall, go to gostudyhall.com or click the link in the description. Let's play the ultimatum game. Imagine I give you $100 to split between you and another person. You get to decide how it's divvied up, so you might want to keep $90 for yourself and give them $10. But not so fast. If the other person refuses your offer, neither of you get the money. Tricky. When people must live together and share resources like money, food, and labor hours, there are incredibly complicated systems at play. Economics is the study of those systems, and economists look at how we produce, consume, and transfer wealth. Hi, I'm Sabrina Cruz, and welcome to Fast Guides, a study hall series that explores different college majors. Let's talk about economics degrees. Since we're going to cover a lot of the things that fit into an economics major, it's probably smart to see where the word comes from. An economy is all the production, transfer, and consumption of goods and services in an entity like a town or a country. Economics is the study of the people behind an economy, what motivates them and why they behave the way they do. And economists observe, analyze, and try to explain what drives human behavior, decisions, and reactions in the context of economies. They can help consumers, business and governments decide how to allocate resources in the most profitable or equitable ways. It combines elements of politics, sociology, and psychology to create a toolkit of approaches, skills, and ways of thinking. These tools help economists solve problems in areas like business, management, and public policy. For example, a town's economy might boom when a new company starts producing, say, jelly beans, and hires a bunch of workers, giving them more money to spend on all of the things they need. There are also ripple effects if the town outlaws the sale of jelly beans, or a neighboring town imposes a high tax on jelly beans. Economists look at all of the ways that choices or events like these create ripple effects in other areas of production, transfer, and consumption of goods and services. So, choosing an economics degree will mean diving into mathematics and statistics in order to apply complex models and formulas to a wide range of problems faced in business, finance, and government. Although less of this is required when earning a Bachelor of Arts as opposed to a Bachelor of science, so be sure to look into what types of degrees are offered at the schools you're considering. It's not all about number crunching, though. A big part of an economist's work involves bringing their understanding of historical trends, social behavior, and public policy to the table when interpreting and recognizing patterns in data. Your critical thinking and communication skills will get lots of use in this major. Traditional economic thinking held that people behave in rational self-interest, using all of the information available to make the most logical decision that benefits them. However, the last few decades of economic study have led to new ideas surrounding human behavior. The study of behavioral economics has argued that people are not straightforward, self-interested robots. A lot of our motivations may actually compete with or complicate ideas about what is best for us. So perhaps more than ever, it's an exciting time to be in the study of human problem solving and choices. Economists might be portrayed as experts who advise the government on how prosperous the nation is, saying things like, we're headed for a recession, or the jelly bean bubble is about to burst. In reality, your economics toolkit can be useful in almost any industry. But what do econ majors actually study? In an economics degree, you'll often be expected to develop a solid foundation in calculus and statistics, especially if you're earning a Bachelor of Science. You'll study how these mathematical rules apply in microeconomics, the study of individual economic choices, and in macroeconomics, how economies work on national and international scales. This is where you'll start learning the language of economics. After taking introductory math, macro, and micro classes, you'll likely focus on specific topical classes, like labor economics or international economics. You might take on more of a finance focus with classes like money and banking or public finance, or a policy-driven focus with classes like economic development and industrial organization. You may end up in classes that incorporate behavioral economics, what motivates people to change their behavior, and what incentives work on people in particular situations. You also may find yourself studying how major economic events in history, like the Great Depression, resulted in policy changes or created new markets. You'll also build on those math skills in order to study more complex problems with regression and econometrics. Depending on your school, the economics degree could be broad, giving you multiple areas of focus, or you might specifically choose a concentration in finance or policy. You also might double major or minor in finance, political science, or a general business degree, since those subjects help you apply the system 
applied learning of the economics major to the needs of specific businesses and governments. That being said, you'll want to be realistic about this degree choice. Economics is often a rigorous and math-focused major, so it's wise to do at least a couple of intro classes early on to make sure it's something that really sustains your interest and persistence. If you've got a real knack for math or are willing to take on the challenging quantitative reasoning needed, it could be right for you. When you hear the word economics, you might think about rigid numbers, logical thinking, and increasing profits, as if there's no room for creativity. But economics is a good example of a place where both creativity and analytical skills has a strong presence. It takes creativity to make connections between past events, current policy choices, and even economic happenings in other countries. But you'll also need analytics to test that connection against the data sets you have available. So if you're a logical thinker with a knack for creative problem solving, economics might be the major for you. In some cases, you'll want to be interested in working with complex data as well as figuring out how you or a client would respond to it. In others, you'll be focused more on theory, the big picture of how economies function, rather than just gathering information from different companies on how much money they made this year relative to last year. You might also be the kind of person who would look for patterns in that data, like seeing that jelly bean producers are growing slowly compared to chocolate bar makers, or that they are all reporting lower profits than expected given last year's boom in. Candy sales, and you'd be able to project what would happen next. On the other hand, you might apply the skills you gain from studying economics to other areas that aren't focused on money, like psychological research. These skills could help you tackle tough problems and see them solved. It is a powerful feeling, but it takes some work to get there. For most people, economics is going to involve a lot of new language. Terms like supply and demand, diminishing returns, and opportunity costs are going to become the water you swim in. So, getting the basics down in an intro class is key to succeeding in more complicated courses, where those terms will be used a lot without any extra explanation. If you'd like to develop some of those needs. Skills ahead of time, you could try taking some advanced math classes before college and learning a programming language that's commonly used in economics, like Stata or MATLAB. They could come in handy if you end up needing to do a lot of data analysis at some point. And if math coursework doesn't come easily to you, you can lean on your school's resources to help you succeed. By accessing tutoring or visiting office hours, you can get some one-on-one -on -one time to work through mathematical concepts. Getting these basics down can help you succeed in upper-level courses, which can be challenging. At the end of the day, many. Of the things that will help you in any major will help you succeed in economics. Being willing to talk to your professors when you have a question, aiming to get more experience in real-world settings like internships, and asking questions at guest lectures with visiting economists and other professionals can make all of the difference. Beyond internships, an economics department that conducts a lot of research might have roles available for research assistants, which can give you a front-row seat to see how economists think and design their projects. And while some economics majors do go on to do research and work directly under the job. Job title economist. Be aware that this path usually requires a master's and PhD. With an undergraduate economics degree, you can find career opportunities in business like finance or technology companies. You might start your career as a data analyst, a financial risk analyst, or a research associate. And higher degrees and more experience typically allow for more upward mobility in these areas. Data analysts work through financial and production data for a particular company to find patterns and create better efficiency in the company, all while complying with laws and policies. Now. Talking about salaries is hard because so much can change from year to year or depending on what location you're in. But in general, median earners at entry level make around sixty-five thousand dollars a year. Economic researchers pull data on a variety of topics, from labor trends to tax revenues and much more, and use it to forecast changes for local governments, economic think tanks, or individual companies. The median entry level salary for this role is around seventy-six thousand dollars a year. Ultimately, your degree can be an asset in a lot of careers that don't have much to do with economics. You'll develop good communication and problem-solving skills, work on your ability to apply math and statistics, and be able to analyze and apply data in decision making. Many businesses, governmental institutions, and nonprofits need the critical thinking and data analysis firepower that comes from an economics degree. If you pair your economics degree with another major or minor, you can open up even more opportunities in even more areas of interest. For instance, if you have an economics concentration as well as a degree in computer information systems or international business, you can. Pursue roles like a market analyst or a position at a business that's looking to expand globally. If you have aspirations to make policy yourself as a politician, a deep background in economics can only help. You may not finish an economics degree with a definitive answer to the ultimatum game, but you'll come away with skills that will make everything from grocery price changes to international trade news 
make more sense. Plus, the more you understand about how resources are distributed around you, the more you'll understand the possibilities to solve problems and achieve big goals, like making the world a more equitable place. So if you want to combine a penchant for math with a love for many disciplines like politics and sociology, economics might be the right degree for you. If you want to investigate more degrees before you choose a major, check out our other videos in this playlist. To find out how to earn college credits with Study Hall, go to gostudyhall.com or click on the link here or in the description. And if you want to help us out, give this video a like and comment to let us know how you chose your degree or what you'd wish you'd known before you started. Thanks for watching.